Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Graham Foster, the Chairman and CTO of Marine Power Systems, and I'd like to thank MEW for allowing us to present this afternoon and give you an update of where we've got to, tell you about our future plans, and also um, tell you how we think we and the sector will fit in with the strategy for Wales to take advantage of the marine energy opportunity. So I'll just run through a quick introduction, progress update, next steps, and our commercial vision. For those of you that don't know Marine Power Systems, we're a developer of hardware for the grid scale extraction of marine renewable energy. Uh, we're not a product, project developer. We're a hardware developer, so our business model will be akin to a wind turbine hardware developer like Vestas. Our lead product is the Wave Subwec, and I'll be telling you uh, today, a couple of you may have had a sneak preview, but I'll be telling you about our recently expanded product portfolio. So the progress we've made recently, I think the, the biggest news is our quarter scale prototype testing. So we've successfully tested our prototype down in fab test. We've demonstrated the USPs with the wave sub, which we're delighted about. And of course, any prototype testing has many opportunities for practical learnings, i.e. don't make a grid emulator boy and expect no problems with that. We've had 16 weeks of tank testing alongside that. So although the quarter scale prototype is probably the most obvious uh, sign of what we've been up to, actually a huge amount of progress has been made in the tank. We've, we've been pushing forward with developments like proving the practicalities of multiple floats on a single reactor. Alongside that, uh, thousands of hours of computational simulation. So this is where we get to try lots of different ideas and uh, weed them out um, in simulation before we try them in the tank, and then they'll then make it into physical C uh, prototypes. Uh, all of the knowledge that we've learned, all of the things we've found with our quarter-scale testing have now made it into the design for the full-scale prototype, which I'll, again, tell you a little bit more about in a minute. So this is just a quick video of our prototype testing, and I'll just talk you a little bit through this. Okay, so this is us in Falmouth, getting the re device ready to deploy. Uh, before we reached Falmouth, we deployed the device from Milford Haven to Falmouth. It's a 170 nautical mile tow, which we completed in 30 hours. So we really demonstrated the transportability of the wave sub. That's a, a big advantage going forward, is the ease of which we can tow the device long distances. As you can see, the wave sub is very easy to um, use as a, a maintenance platform. Being able to get on and off the device safely, quickly, easily is a huge advantage. I think you're going to hear a little bit of a repeat of some of the messages that you heard earlier from orbital power, but there's a good reason for that, and it's, and it's because it's very important. We can tow the device at five or six knots, so it's not a case of slowly uh, chugging around. We can actually get a good bit of speed up and tow the device long distances very quickly. There you go. As we progress to full scale, we're gonna work further on the transportability of the device and we'll be able to up the towing speed even further and the sea state tolerance of the device in its surface configuration. Again, that will be increased um, through improved design and just through being bigger. So the moorings took around um, two to three days to install before we deployed the actual device. The device itself was, was deployed in half a day. So having never done it before uh, with a prototype device, we turned up on site and half a day later the, the device was deployed. As you can see here, the device is very easy to get on and off and that led to the rapidity with which we were able to deploy the device. And again, uh, repeating messages that you have heard earlier, but it's absolutely vital to be able to get on the device and perform maintenance quickly and easily. We don't want to be going out with a quarter of a million pound a day crane barge to change a fuse. We want to be going out in a rib that costs less than a thousand pounds a day, and that's super important for this sector going forward. Uh, you've heard a little bit about convergence. I think that's one thing that most devices will converge on, 
is being easy to deploy and maintain. That's going to be really important for this sector. So that's where we are with our quarter scale. Uh, it's been a great project, still ongoing, um, and the, but now we're obviously moving forward to our full scale project. The design is underway and the, start, the project officially started uh, in January 2019. Of course, we were working on various things ahead of that. Sea testing is due in late 2021. As you can see from the uh, rendering there, design work has started. There's, um, you know, we've learned a lot through all the work we've been doing and where we're headed with WaveSub is a very structurally efficient uh, device that has excellent power capture. The first commercial full-scale WaveSub will be a five megawatt device. It'll be a, uh, you know, an array on device of five, uh, four uh, 1.5 megawatt plus floats. And uh, the structural efficiency is, again, very good and better than um, fixed offshore wind. So we're, we're, we're looking at that sort of um, ratio of cost performance that we all need in this industry. Very big, heavy steel structures aren't going to work. But WaveSub is looking very cost efficient. We've also expanded our product portfolio. Some of that time that we spent in the tank, or a lot of the time we spent in the tank and in computational simulations, was to optimize the stability of our main structure and its deployed configuration. Uh, we were very successful with that work, and we actually found out we ended up with a deployed underwater structure that, that was more stable than most approaches that are currently being taken in uh, floating offshore wind. So obviously that led us to discuss whether we thought that was an opportunity for us as a business. Uh, the answer to that was, was yes, it was, it was a good opportunity. And you can see here uh, the portfolio that we've now established at Marine Power Systems. We have WaveSub, which is our primary product, but we also have DualSub, uh, which simply combines uh, a wind turbine with, a wa with the WaveSub. And of course, if we've taken the trouble to develop the, the uh, floating technology to that extent, then removing the wave energy from it for those areas where there isn't a significant wave resource, that's a step uh, that we'll take as well. So we've actually made significant progress with, with DualSub. We've been working on this behind the scenes for quite some time. The work we've carried out so far is tank testing and computational simulation. And we've now officially launched the project to develop a quarter scale prototype of DualSub. That project is going live in the middle of this year. Uh, sorry, the quarter scale project will be kicked off formally in the middle of this year. And C testing will be carried out early 2022. And we've, uh, we think we've done a good job of protecting our IP for DualSub as well. And that, that project is also uh, fun funded, 99% uh, funding in place for that will be a 6.5 million project to develop and deploy a quarter scale DualSub. I'll just run uh, this, this uh, simulation through. It's important to note this isn't a, uh, an animation, it's a, it's, a, it's a simulation. So this is a full Wexim simulation with all the wave loadings and the maximum possible wind loading of the wind turbine included. And what you can see here is that the platform is absolutely rock solid. There's no turbine movement whatsoever. Uh, we've also carried out early tank testing. Again, same result, very successful. Zero platform movement, pretty much. A uh, very stable platform for the wind turbine and uh, you know, a multi-float array of wave energy devices. The, the future for this is a 25 megawatt plus uh, machine output. And that, I think, is going to be really important in achieving a low cost of energy. So this has um, informed our vision of what you know, offshore energy farms are going to look like. I think having the insights of knowing what these technologies are likely to cost, we're working, doing a lot of work on that at the moment. We're not seeing big differences between the cost of wave energy and floating wind, tur wind turbines. Um, so we see a, a future where we, we just have simply have offshore energy farms. We don't see wave and wind competing at all. We, saw, we see farms comprising of multiple devices, all in synergy, and there's room for, com for wave, combined wind and wave, and floating wind only. And a little bit more insight into that is, you know, the, the wind and wave have very different spacing and directionality requirements. To get the best use of any given piece of seabed, assuming there is a wind and a wave resource, then a combination of devices is going to be needed. 
Combined farms will have a lot of advantages. Uh, one of the big ones being that the energy generated will be more consistent because uh, wind and waves are often out of sync. And ultimately, this combined approach will lead to the lowest LCOE for an offshore energy farm. From a Welsh perspective, I think this is an absolutely fantastic opportunity for Wales. Uh, speaking just on behalf of MPS, you know, we, we're based in Wales, our head office is here in Wales, and our intention is to develop manufacturing operations, head offices, everything we can in Wales, and with that comes a, a huge supply chain as well. One of our advantages is transportability, and so we will be able to transport wave, complete wave sub, wind sub, dual sub devices a long way so we can establish a real um, large scale manufacturing base here in Wales. Um, I mean, and Wales is in a great position. I think Wales can pioneer wave, floating wind, and co located farms. The obvious opportunity for that is the South Premiership Demonstration Zone. That will lead to further farm developments within Wales and it'll create this expertise that can then be exported, a bit like the Danes did with um, offshore wind. Wales can hopefully achieve that too with these marine opportunities. And a little note to policymakers, you know, revenue support is going to be needed for these early deployments, but also, you know, the policymakers use it to get what you want, insist on local content, insist on companies being located in Wales, anchor them here, and then make sure that benefit comes back into Wales from the investment that's made here. A quick thank you. Um, again, uh, the Welsh European Funding Office have been absolutely fundamental to what we've been doing, so thank you to them, and we're looking forward to announcing some continued support very soon. Welsh Government, of course, Innovate UK, and uh, all our private investors. There's too many to list individually, but uh, without these individuals and organisations, this wouldn't be possible. And that's it. So I'd like to thank you all for, for listening to my presentation. Thank you.